Alright, this turn is probably going to be pretty uneventful, so I'm going to go through it. Oh shoot, what is this? A uh, little bit of open spot here. The trees are smaller, there wasn't quite as much cover, and there's some guys sitting right here, and they, they nailed a couple Russians. Should be able to get them with return fire now, but they got in a, they got in a couple of casualties before they're going to die. Looks like we've also got a machine gun, a heavy machine gun, on the upper floor of this barn here, or building or whatever it is. And that got in some casualties too. I think these guys are receiving some fire from the village area. Not a big deal though, it's, it's pretty sporadic. I'm going to want to call in some mortars on that building over there, that's a perfect target for some mortars. I wonder if I can get a tank to shoot at that, actually. Perfect! He can actually see the second floor. That tank is going to destroy that second floor. Okay, FO team has arrived. Let's go ahead and dismount him. Okay, so we got all our guys loaded up on the vehicle here. We're going to drive this truck, but we're only driving the truck where we know it's safe, like right here. We know that this area is safe, so I'm going to drive the truck up right there, and then they're going to unload next turn. So these guys are moving in position to attack the bridge. Oh no, I finally lost the tank commander. They finally got him. And these tanks are going to continue just using their... Whoa, good shot. Um, these tanks are going to continue to use their machine guns to keep the enemies suppressed in that area. Why isn't this tank shooting? I don't. I guess he can't actually get a shot off on that building. That sucks. I need to move forward a bit. I really want to knock out that machine gun as quickly as possible before it gives me problems. Hmm, who did that? I actually don't know why they made the go button the way it is. I wasn't consulted on that. Um, it just kind of appeared one day. So I'm not sure. Would have to ask Steve. Get these guys off on the wood line here. Okay, let's see if I can't. Apparently, he can't hit that, so I'm gonna try and move him forward a bit. Move him like right here. Oh, and now he doesn't have a shot. What the crud? Okay, let's try this. Okay, that looks like it might hit. Uh, let's see, how am I going to do this? Okay, you don't need area fire there anymore. Move you back up, the commander's already dead, you can't get any worse off. Let's try and get another shot. There we go. So I got two tanks um, set to, once they reach their destination, they're going to start shooting the upper floor of that building where that machine gun team is. So I have an idea. I know I've got a Panzerfaust team sitting right there. I think I'm going to try something. I'm going to move this tank around. This should be what this should be out of its range. When you say collapsible, do you mean like um, a bunch of windows that you can move around and minimize, or do you mean just being able to make it disappear completely with a hotkey? Oh wait, he can actually shoot from right there. Oh, I don't even have to move him. 
put some rounds in that general area to get that Panzerfaust team shaken up. All right, I'm going to let these guys sit tight until that machine gun's taken care of. And we're going to save. Okay. All right, I hear the mortars firing, so we should start getting a fire mission on this on this other stug here. Ah, good. Now we got rounds going in on that building. That machine gun will be toast very quickly. Um, that's something that's been on the requested list for a long time. I don't actually know um, what the plans are and when that would be done. Okay, um, I think those guys are toast, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the, uh, the fire mission there, or the, the area target there. I'm going to let these tanks continue shooting out this building. Um, I think I'm also not going to move these guys forward yet, because there's a risk of the tank hitting the tree and exploding and hitting those guys, so they're going to stay put for another little while. I have gotten reinforcements. Here's what I got. All right, so we got some new units here. Uh, you'll see some new floating icons here. We have got flamethrowers. It shows a little guy with a backpack and a little flame on the icon. Uh, in this case, they are dismounted flamethrowers. I don't think I need to tell you guys what flamethrowers are. I'm sure you know. Uh, they are very tricky to use, though, the dismounted ones. They only have a range of about 30 meters or 40 meters, depending upon the model. Um, I actually don't particularly care for them unless I'm in a very urban environment because it is just way too hard to get them close enough to the point where they can actually uh, use their main weapon. Uh, they also become a priority target if they get spotted, and they tire out quickly because they're carrying a heavy load. So they're tricky. It's really tricky getting flamethrowers in, but once you get them close enough in, they will uh, decimate anything they hit. So anyway, so those are flamethrowers. We've also got, if you see the little infantry guy here, he's got a little shovel on his icon. Those are engineers, or as the Russians call them, sappers. And these guys come with demo charges, which we're going to demonstrate some use of later. But um, short, long story short, um, without any special commands, what you can do is you can get, if you get within hand grenade range of bunkers or vehicles, they will use demo charges on them, and they are super powerful. They will basically KO stuff with one hit. Maybe not bunkers always, but they're they're extremely strong, extremely effective against vehicles if you get them within close range, and they'll use them automatically. You don't have to tell them to. As you can see, they only carry a limited amount of them. Usually, it's about eight or ten per sapper squad, and they can, we, you can also use them to mark mines, which isn't used that often. Really, it's not really that important of an ability for the most part. But uh, you can also use them, which we'll, I'll demonstrate when we get into the village, you can also use them to blast holes through walls, so you can make entry points into new areas. We also get a couple new types of vehicles. Uh, we have heavy tanks, we've got some IS-2 heavy tanks. So this battle is the first battle that in the campaign that introduces heavy tanks. Uh, for a quick version of what the difference is, is that heavy tanks tend to have bigger weapons, heavier armor, and they tend to be slower and have less mobility compared to medium tanks, like the T-34s we've already had. So in general, you want to keep them at a, a further distance away so that they don't get flanked. If you're up against an enemy heavy tank, you want to try and hit them in the... If you don't have an equal weapon that can penetrate their front, you want to try and hit them in the side or the rear, uh, or immobilize them so you can go around them. And we also have some... We've already encountered the Stugs, so you already know about the assault guns. We've got some Soviet assault guns, which these ones are very heavy, ISU-152s. So that's a 152 millimeter. It's basically an artillery round that thing is firing, direct fire. And so, yeah, these things, you don't want to get them in too close or expose them too much because they don't have a turret, so if they get immobilized, uh, they're going to be stuck where they are, and they basically become a bunker. So, and as you can see, these guys are tank riding, so I can drive them right up to the battle and disembark them somewhere it's safe. I'm probably, I'll probably just be able to drive them straight up to these woods here. And I think I also got some more artillery. Let's 
go ahead and give this FO a target arc so he doesn't shoot and reveal his position. Okay, I'm actually going to, let's see, what am I going to do with these guys? I think I'm going to move them forward a little bit, but I'm not going to commit them to the battle just yet. I'm going to wait until I uh, neutralize the bridge defenses, and then I'm going to bring these guys up. So I'm just going to bring them up a little bit on the road and then leave them. All right, looks like my mortar is attacking the Stug, and it's getting pretty close. Hopefully, I got a direct hit. That would be nice. I think that was a spotting round, so next up comes a fire for effect. All right, I'm going to let these tanks shell this building for one more turn, then I'm going to move the infantry into the bridge objective. At that point, um, I'm going to move the tanks up, and then I'm going to run these reinforcements up and offload their guys where they can get into the woods here. So it looks like we got some infantry on the uh, outskirts of the village here, which is expected, really. Yeah, so what I'm going to do next, uh, thinking ahead, uh, these are pretty much neutralized, so I'm going to clean them up. I'm then going to move these guys forward up through the woods, and I'm going to have mass tank fire just destroy anything I spot uh, in turn. So I'm not going to try and just rush everything into the village. Uh, I'm just going to destroy stuff as I see it. Okay, I think we can cut that fire. Let's make sure I don't have any more fire orders going. Don't want my infantry to run into something nasty. Okay, so these guys are ready. That should be good enough, right there. That should be enough for them to determine whether we own it. So, yeah, there's a, um, this is a little bit of a sunken area, so I'm going to bring them up to this, um, I'm going to bring them up to this bank here, and then they'll be able to poke out and look over it. Have, uh, how have I done on this stug? It's definitely suppressed. Uh, the engine's still running. Don't know if it's immobilized or not. Shift these guys over into the wooded area. Okay, now we're going to move these tanks, we're going to swing them around like this, we're going to swing them around like that. There is no one correct way to do this, by the way. I could have also sent all my forces this way and taken advantage of longer lines of fire to shoot stuff from a distance. Oh, and you can see my artillery starting to hit the village. So that's going to go on for quite a while, because I set it for a long fire mission. Um, so that's going to do a good job of weakening the defenses inside the village. Uh, I also could have split my forces and had half go this way and half go that way. There's a number of ways I could have done this. I could have even, if you want to go crazy and have something really exciting, you could put a smoke screen right here, load up your guys on the tanks, and drive the tanks straight to the village. That would be kind of entertaining. Watch that happen. That would be very high casualty, but it'd definitely be fun to watch. 